Hey, hey, Internet! Swag here, and welcome back to the basics of CV2 series. This tutorial will pick up where the other one left off, so if you haven't seen that one or know what executions and booleans are in CV2, please go watch that one first. Links in the description. This one, however, will be all about text values. How to get them, make them, and display them. So without further ado, let's get on it. It is quite an easy setup of three steps to get yourself a button that displays a player's name. You can see that a button v2 by default has a execution but also an output for the player that pressed the button. If we get a two string chip, we can change the player value into the player name. CV2 works with a bunch of different values. If we want to display anything, we first have to take the concept, which in this case for CV2 it's the concept of the player, and actually turn it into a word, which is a string value. So if we get a button set text, say they, whenever this gets an execution with the target of this button, update the text to the player's name. This is how easy it can be to get a button that changes to someone's name when pressed. This can be useful for certain setups where you want just a single player to be able to use them. They press the button, you will see by the name on the button that it is outputting their name, and then you can use that value to do whatever you do with a player value. Now to get a bit more elaborate with strings, let's get a new button V2. We can ask for a string from the player that pressed the button. This chip is called prompt local player. Now the local player is the player that pressed the button. I am the local player of my setup. You are the local player of your setup. When we look on the inside of this button, you will see when the button is pressed, it compares who the player is that pressed the button and says it should only run if that player is local. So that means that by default, this execution will prompt the local player, which is the player that pressed the button. What the prompt local player chip does is if I press a button, it will give me a notification on my watch. It will say prompt because that is the title. Um, I haven't written any instructions, so the prompt is empty but I can type anything in here. And when it is done, it will fire an execution from here and my response will come out as a string. So to make use of that, we can get ourselves a text value and say, when complete, update the text value with this text. There we go. Easy as that. Now this is a bit boring. Um, so we are going to make it a bit more interesting. Remember how you can change the player's name into a string and how this is already local. So what we will do is get a get local player chip, a to string, and a string format. Now the string format chip 
is one of my favorite chips because it allows you to be very creative with the text that you wish to display. And when building games or any map in Rec Room, it is very important in giving players some visual feedback. So what we are going to say is get the local player, turn them into a string value, configure our string format to have another input, and then wire the response to our second input. With the string format chip, we can, well, make a format of how we want to display our text. So if I say this little bit of code represents input one. So input one is the local player. After that, it says semicolon and input two. And this will carry on like that if you give it more inputs. Uh, input three will be two in between squiggly brackets. Input four will be a three in between squiggly brackets and so on and so forth. And that will be the result of our prompt. Prompt title, update text. The prompt is what would you like to say? So all of this together, you might have already guessed how this will go. Before the video continues, leave comments what you think will happen once I push this button and type in the words. What would I like to say? I would like to say... Give it your rec room best. You will see that because of the string format, take the local player, convert it to string and use that name as the first value it says semicolon value two which is the response from the prompt local player so the whole thing together says swagger muffin says give it your rec room best and that was string values text is a great way to signal the players of your room through the text gadget or notify player chip so master string values and you have a great tool to let your builds and rooms communicate with your players. That will be all for now though. I hope this tutorial was useful to you, that you use your newfound knowledge wisely, and to see you in the next one. Bye.